Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I built this bench over a year ago when I first moved into the workshop and a lot has changed in that time. You need to be in a space a while until you find the most efficient way of using it. So I'm going to make a new bench and have a bit of a reorganise. This style of bench with the holes in is great if you use a track saw a lot, but I don't really. And for me, the disadvantage of having the cubbies underneath so I can't get tall items stored underneath it and all the dust and debris falling through the holes has put me off it a bit. It's also probably a bit larger than I need, so the new one is going to be made slightly smaller. I have a proper workbench, but I still want it to be a bit more sturdy than the single sheet of ply I had before. So I'm going to build it out of this 38 by 63 timber because it's very cheap. So you can see this new bench is going to be shorter and not as deep as the old one. When I've got all the timbers cut and laid out, I can mark spaces where I'm going to put some biscuits in. This machine has a fence on it, but I'm just going to slide it along a bit of ply to get the biscuits in the position I want them. This tool was a Christmas present and this is my first outing with it. I've never used one before, but I've always thought it'd be handy for gluing up large panels like this. The slots I'm cutting are to accept number 20 biscuits. I get lots of PVA wood glue put along the edge and into the slots, then I can get it spread out and get the biscuits put into place. Now I can start getting them put together. So now it's just a question of moving my way along, repeating this until I've got it all glued up. Now I could glue this up in one panel straight away, but as I'm using construction timber, and I've had picked the straightest ones I could find, they're not always perfect. So I'm going to glue them up in three 10 inch sections, because that is the maximum capacity of my planer. Once I've got the three sections clamped up, I leave them to dry, and then I can get one side plane down. This timber also has rounded off inches on each strip, so this planing process will remove that as well. With one face flattened, I can then get them put through the machine and brought down to the same thickness. These three pieces can now get glued together, and to help keep them aligned, I'm also going to put some biscuits in them. As I say, this is my first time using this machine, and I'm impressed with the biscuit system. It really helps them glue up like this, keeping everything aligned. And I'm already thinking of all the other projects I'm going to be using it again in. With the three bits glued together, I had to go out to the garage and dig out some clamps I've not used since being in this workshop but they're the only ones I had that were long enough to glue up this bench top. With the top clamped up and drying, I could work on the legs. I want the bench to be the same height as before. I've got this timber that's kind of fence post size, but untreated, so I can just mark out how tall I want it to be and get all the bits cut down. For the supports of the legs, I've got some more construction timber, which is 38 by 89 mil and with all the bits cut, I can work out how I'm going to join it all together. My plan is to use the table saw to cut a recess for this timber to slot into the legs. So I get it marked out where I want this joint to go, and then I can go to the table saw and use my 5 mil grooving blade to nibble away at the waist. There's a link down below on my tool page to where I got this blade from. I also cut another slot for support that's going to go along the back of the bench. With all the joints cut, I can give everything a sand down. Now I can get it all put together. So first, I get lots of glue in the joint and get a brush and spread it around. The first cross support can then be put into place. Now I could clamp it up like this, and I'm sure that'd be strong enough, but I'm going to screw it down as well. This won't look as nice, but it's safe on clamps, and this is only a bench for the workshop. 
for the top of the legs, the bit's just going to get put on some glue and screwed down into it. I can now cut a piece down to go along the back and this is going to be the same length as the bench. I can then pre-drill and countersink some holes in it. But I'm not going to get it all put together quite yet as there's not really room with the old bench still in here. And I'd forgotten how heavy this thing was. The top is probably a sheet and a half of 18mm birch ply but I managed to get it out on the dolly and put it in the garage. So while I've got that out, I might as well do some early spring cleaning. So I'm going to take these chisels off the wall. When I first built the workshop, I liked the idea of these shelves going all the way around, but actually they just turned into a dumping ground for things, so I'm going to get rid of them. Of course, then I've got holes in the walls and marks that need sorting out, and I can see how filthy everything is. I think an air cleaner might be a purchase for this year. I get all the screw holes filled, and then I can get a fresh coat of paint on. Luckily I had enough left in the tin to do this. With that wall looking a bit better, I can get back on with the new bench. So just to make it look a bit more interesting, I'm going to stain the legs. I'm using India ink for this, as pine is notoriously difficult to stain black. There'll be a link down below under finishes to where I got this from. With the stain dry, I can start getting this base put together. So I get the legs down but put on their side and then I can get the back piece put into place. After applying a water-based finish, it got a little tight and needed some persuasion. But that's not a bad thing. And then I can get it screwed down. No glue this time, as if I ever want to move this, it'd be nice to be able to take it apart again. To give the base some extra protection and to be predictable, I'm going to give it a coat of Danish oil. To attach the top, I've got some of these L brackets that are just going to get screwed into the legs. I get one position front and back on each of the legs. Now I can get the top in place which is considerably lighter than the old one. I can get some screws driven in from underneath through those brackets into the top. It's all pretty flat and smooth, but I give it one last sand down when I remember to turn the sand on. I could now apply some finish and call it done, but my lesson learnt with the old bench was after one year it got pretty beat up, especially with a few tracks or cuts on it. So I plan to cover the top with a bit of hardboard, as this is incredibly cheap and if it's really beat up after a year, I can just take it off and replace it. This workshop and bench are not really big enough for cutting down sheet goods and I normally do them outside, but this seemed to work. A couple of passes with a sharp blade and I got most of the way through this board. Then I can move it over so the cut line was on the edge of the table. I can then push down and snap it along the cut line. I can then run the knife along and cut the rest of the way through. To attach it, I'm just going to run a series of screws around the edge so it'd be easy to take off in the future when it gets beaten up. And that's it all done. Now I can get the planar thickness under there, which I couldn't do before. I can also get the dust separator and the extractor under there. Now I just need to work out where I want this new bench to go and where everything else is going to go back. Now I'm in a remodeling mood. So I pull that bench out to the other end of the workshop again, and I'm going to put a shelf along this end wall. I'm going to put some battens along the end wall and down the sides for the shelf to sit on. I've kind of scrapped down to the height I want these battens to go, so I can get it sat on top of this and drive some screws into the studs. I 
I've got a few bits of this nice chunky 20 centimeter wide wood so I'm going to get it planed down and thicknessed and the plan is to get two of these put together to make a nice 40 centimeter wide shelf as I've got the machine set up in the workshop still I'm going to biscuit these together so I mark out where I want the slots to go and then I can get them cut I can now get them glued up in the same way as before. I told you I'll be using this biscuit jointer again soon, but I probably didn't think this soon. When it's all dry, I give it a quick sand down, not worrying about going too fine as this is very utilitarian. Then I can get it put into place. It was a bit tight manoeuvring around here, and I was worried I got my measurements right, but fitted like a glove. And I think with it being so chunky and supported on three sides, it's going to be pretty strong. It probably would have been fine just sat there, but just for a bit of extra security, I'm just going to drive some screws round into that batten. Now I can get some bits put on it. These are things that have probably been under benches, so it's nice to actually have them at a decent working height. So I'll perhaps look at getting a power strip put underneath so I can have these plugged in permanently. Under the shelf I've got my Stanley cases and some of my drawers and other tools. And I think that's worked out pretty well. So I'm going to call that a day for moving things around. Got the new bench there, the old bench, a new shelf and everything's looking a bit neater. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreons and please subscribe for more videos.